Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you to the NUMU team here, um, Michelle, Julie, and Cheyenne, and um, of course, Amy, the executive director, and Craig Kroll, the curator. Um, it's a real honor to be part of this show and this auction um, and be able to support NUMU at this time. It's been a difficult time for arts organizations and it's been a very difficult time for a lot of people. So I would like to pay my respects to the estimated 2 million people who have died from this virus and everyone who's lost someone. Um, I do hope it'll get better soon with vaccinations, um, but I did wanna just acknowledge why we're here um, and it's kind of seriousness and the impact. Um, and that being said, <laughs> um, onto the art. So uh, the work that I did for this exhibition is called Going, Going, Gone. And it is about the plight of the pangolin. The pangolin entered the news early on in the pandemic when it was linked as a possible transmitter for the virus between bats and humans. And uh, learning this, knowing this information, it led me to investigate the pangolin a little bit more um, since I actually knew very little about it. So you can see the three pangolins there at the bottom of the image. Um, this is a collage um, on top of a silkscreen background, which is just sort of that hatch mark texture that you see. So what I learned is that um, about the pangolin is that the pangolin is the most heavily trafficked wild animal in the world, illegally trafficked wild animal in the world. Um, and if poaching continues, it will actually be extinct in 20 years, sadly. Um, so although I usually make art about my personal encounters and sightings with wildlife, um, I just, this resonated so much with my themes of, of extinction, um, humans role in extinction, and our relationship with animals um, in animals in the wild. So I was distracted by chat. <laughs> um, so next slide, please. Um, while I was making the pangolin piece, I was also working on a companion piece to that, which was or is about bats. Um, I love bats. I find them incredibly amazing and have been um, using them in my work for over 20 years. Now, I do know that this slide looks weird. So I want to just explain it a little bit. It's um, 25 by 36 inches and it's tens of thousands of tiny little black hatch marks that I've drawn with ink on a piece of mylar. And so the mylar is clear and reflective and it's layered over a collage. And photographing this piece was horrible. So I know there's a sort of weird reflective effect and pixelated um, effect that happens because those marks are so tiny. So I do apologize, but I wanted to share this um, because of its relevance um, to the pandemic and this exhibition. So this piece is called Deforestation. And um, I used to love the movie Contagion. Maybe I still do, and maybe I should keep that a secret, but it did actually influence this piece. Um, and in April of 2020, so right after um, we were all in lockdown and, and things were getting um, intense, I read an NPR article about the accuracy of that movie. Um, and in the article, Rebecca Katz, who is the director of the Center for Global Health and Science and Security at Georgetown University, um, said that she often shows the film's ending to her students in her class on emerging infectious disease. And I found this really incredible because um, I'm going to, spoiler alert, so mute me if you want to watch the movie. Um, the end of that movie is really intense. Um, so at the end of the movie, they show this rainforest being bulldozed and then pig farms being built onto the land. And of course, the displaced bats move into the buildings for the pigs and transfer the deadly virus. Um, so Kat says, and I'll read this quote, um, I showed the last few minutes of contagion to my class to show the interconnected, interconnectedness between animals, the environment, and humans. So I am also incredibly interested in that interconnectedness. Um, that is what my work has been about um, ever since I started a serious art practice. 
Um, and in addition to that, I'm also gravitated, I also gravitate to the animals that are living on our fringe, that can live in suburbs and cities and on farms and all of these areas that human life has taken over and dominates. Um, and also it's interesting to me that we find these animals so often gross or scary um, or pests. <laughs> so I just, I'm fascinated with that relationship. Um, so next slide, please. So I just wanted to show these two pieces that relate to that. Um, and this is work, this is a series of work called Coyote Sightings. Um, and I was working on this series through 2019 and I did take a break from it because I have been making work um, more related to um, events of 2020 um, as monumental and um, impactful as they have been. It's, was inevitable that I had to leave behind this series to, to, I guess, process that. But I just wanted to show these because they do relate to the um, subject matters that I'm drawn to in my work um, in relation to the pandemic um, and also in, um, in my technique. So um, these are also screen print backgrounds with collage on top and some drawing and you can see some hatch mark making um, in the work on the left. So these um, pieces do illustrate actual coyote sightings that I've had um, since moving to the Palo Alto Stanford um, area of the peninsula. Um, on the very first day I moved here, I saw a coyote close to my home. And of course that just like made my day and lit up my life. And very soon thereafter, I realized that a small pack of three coyotes were making their home um, in some open space tracks right behind um, my street. And um, I made a point of um, trying to see them as much as possible and learn about them and their behaviors and how they lived so close to us and in association with us. Um, I'm just so mesmerized by, by wild animals living next door. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. And um, thanks again for listening and for being here. It's been a pleasure for me.